Let us ask what our guest is thinking about all that mayhem that is going on in the world. Let me welcome Ziev Khanin, Professor of the Department of Political Studies and Begin Sadat, Center for Strategic Studies, bar Ilan University. Ziev, hello. Uh, good evening, pleasure to be with you. Nice, the pleasure is mine. What, in your opinion, can trigger the Third World War if we are not already into it? Well, uh, I would say that we are in the situation of the World War uh, already about uh, several decades. Uh, simply the Third World War uh, is a little bit different than we expected or we are used to uh, concerning the experience of the First World War and the Second World War. Mm. Uh, this uh, Third World War is actually a combination of various local conflicts with a hybrid war, uh, including the propaganda and uh, local uh, uh, clashes uh, and internal conflicts and uh, ethnic and religious uh, confrontations and so on and so forth. But uh, the question is whether this local or regional wars they have an option in the nearest future or in a distant future uh, to combine themselves in order to bring the whole uh, globe uh, into a confrontation of everybody against with everybody. Uh, I wouldn't say this is the situation at the moment, but we're still uh, concerned about all this. But I believe no expert knows what's going on because I've talked to experts and they are like very carefully trying to choose words but the, I can feel that the, on the background of it is the absence of the knowledge of what is really going on. It's the mayhem and the chaos in absolute, in, uh, there's no possibility to predict events. Is that right? Am I right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's, that's the situation. Uh, well, uh, maybe a century ago, uh, the rules of the game were uh, properly clear. I mean, a friend of my friend is my friend. Enemy of my enemy enemy uh, is my enemy. Uh, at the moment, uh, you can uh, uh, be a friend of your enemy and enemy of your friend. That's uh, more or less the situation. Let me give you an example. For example, uh, uh, for instance, we have uh, very good relations, even strategic partnership uh, with Azerbaijan. We Israel, I mean. Uh, on the other hand, Azerbaijan has a strategic partnership with Turkey. Relations between Ankara and Jerusalem used to be much better. Uh, well, um, like uh, uh, a few years ago, I've heard in Moscow from very like top ranking uh, officials, very close to Kremlin, uh, that Russia at the moment have, has two major partners in the Middle East. Uh, one partner is Iran and Israel is the second one. Relations between Israel and uh, Iran are actually, uh, if they are not enemy, what they are, what enemy means, you know. Right. Uh, so uh, at the moment we have here in the Middle East, the so-called various three angles of cooperation and confrontation. Uh, and current war in Gaza, uh, uh, or in Israel, in fact, started with the invasion of uh, extremist, the military wing of the extremist uh, radical fundamentalist uh, movement, Hamas, uh, on the Israeli territory uh, is actually one of the factors. We can, you can define it as, the, as a local war. Uh, on the other hand, uh, this local war uh, is a dramatic obstacle uh, to normalizations of relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia, yes. uh, which would be the end of the hundred years long Arab-Israeli conflict. Uh, and the end of the hundred years long Arab-Israeli conflict would mean establishment of the system of security in the Middle East uh, uh, of this triangle, United States, Israel and uh, Saudi bloc against uh, Russia and Iran and China and Pakistan. So at the moment, this is not the question, this is not the issue, it's uh, postponed for unknown time. Uh, so you can define it as an unclosed triangles, you can define it as a local conflict, but it's one of the places, one of the uh, platforms of the Third World War, which we are not used to. Yeah, well, do you, do you believe, uh, yes, thank you very much for your answer. The half of a question, do you believe everything lost for Israel with Saudi Arabia? Oh, it's just a matter of no, time. No, no. Yes. Uh, no, uh, I don't think so. Uh, but Saudi Arabia, as a, a leader, or, in, or at least a country which pretends to be a leader in the Arab world, uh, should keep uh, uh, this simple uh, uh, and uh, support the symbolic meaning of the Palestinian question. Right. Uh, of course, uh, the Palestinian Arabs, uh, it's uh, much more a factor that undermines 
stability of the uh, moderate pro-Western Arab regimes, rather than, uh, as it used to be, became a sort of a solution for them. Uh, because, you know, Israeli occupation of the so-called uh, so-called so occupation of the Palestinian Arab territories, whether they're Palestinian or not, it's also a good question, but let us leave it for now. Uh, so for them, it was an easy explanation to their peoples uh, in concern of uh, this uh, uneasy questions why they're poor, on why uh, lacking water or lacking proper education. At the moment, uh, as I said, the uh, Palestinian issue undermines them from uh, inside. And they understand that Arab-Israeli conflict uh, or Palestinian-Israeli conflict uh, is in fact uh, uh, something uh, which prevents from establishment of the, all the security arrangement in the Middle East right. against the uh, challenge of Iran and their, and, and their allies. Uh, so I would say when the, the, the war will be stopped, if it will not continue to the um, uh, a large scale, you know, uh, uh, high format uh, Middle Eastern conflict, uh, meaning Israeli-Iran war, uh, with the help of, uh, with the support of different subjects, United States from one side, Russia and China maybe from the other side. Uh, but at the moment, if it will, uh, will be still uh, on the level of uh, uh, Hamas-Israeli war, uh, I believe that after the end of this war, Saudi Arabia and Israel will come back uh, to the track of negotiations.